Hello and welcome. Today we'll be making this versatile multi-radio. This panel was meant to be simple and versatile, so you can use it for comm frequencies, nav frequencies, transponder codes, whatever you want, as long as you can read it from the simulator using MobiFlight. Thank you so much to Stephen Chalmers, who sent over some files and gave me this idea for the project in the first place. It was really cool to work with him on this project. For this build, you will need these 3D printed parts here. You can also laser engrave the faceplate. You'll need these M3 screws, M3 nuts, and M3 spacers. You'll also need some mounting screws, preferably four instead of two, some jumper wires, one or two rotary encoders, an Arduino Mega 2560. You can also get away with smaller ones like the Arduino Uno, although I always recommend the 2560 because it's the most bang for your buck. You'll also want a display. They come in two colors, blue and yellow, I don't know, I'm colorblind, blue and yellow. <laughs> These come in two sizes, 16 by two, and then 20 by four. You can find this entire unit as a kit or assembled at captainbobsim.com slash shop. Your first step is going to be to get your faceplate. That's this piece if you 3D print it, and you're gonna make sure it has its text. If it's this 3D printed piece, you have an option of applying your own decals, or you can use the raised text version paint it all black and sand it down, or you can use a marker pen like this. You just lightly apply paint to the erased text. Notice there are two versions of this. I prefer this one because it's more simple. You can also have two encoders, having the top one adjust the index, that's which row you're affecting, and the bottom one affect your favorite. So if you're always adjusting your altimeter setting, you can set this one to your favorite and just have this one default to altimeter setting. This right one is where you put the dual encoder, and this just adjusts everything uh, really nicely. So let's start out with our dual encoder. Put this through. You'll want to solder the circuit board. If yours is like this PropWash Sim dual encoder, PropWash Sim actually sent me these dual encoders, so thank you so much to them uh, for helping me with my radio stack. You can see here I soldered on these pin headers, but you can also just solder directly to the circuit board uh, like I did here. On this one, you can actually see that I merged these three common grounds all into one ground wire. The common, the common, and one of the button pins all goes to ground, this black wire. We'll deal more with the wiring in a second. Right now, let's just put it in the panel, push that down, and tighten it. These are both 7.5 millimeter holes, so they should fit most electronics. Once we have the dual encoder, we can put the knobs on, and then just make sure that it fits next to the display. So we'll line up the holes, and it looks all good to go. Woohoo! Now let's put on the display. You'll notice these smaller holes right here. This worked out perfectly so that I can put the smaller display right here and just have like two rows or you can use the bigger display and have it behind right here. Now I'll put the 20 millimeter M3 screws through here. These were actually going to hand tighten because if you tighten them down too much, you'll start to grab the panel or the display and we don't want to bend the circuit board here or the faceplate here. All right, we have these four screws in and now we just need the encoder. I soldered my wires onto the encoder, but you can just as easily use the circuit board that comes pre-soldered to the KY040 and jump that over to the multi-radio. On these encoders, you may need to snip this little piece that protrudes up just to make it flush with the panel. You might also need to do the same on the dual encoder. Now you can get the rotary encoder, push it through and tighten this down too. If I sound like I'm dead, uh, <laughs> that's because I am. For this encoder, you have two options. You can either use the knob that it came with, and it's it's really shiny, so some people like that. Or I 3D printed these knobs, and then you can use a paint pen. You can find these like on eBay or online. And just paint lightly over the text. And now we have this nice little bit of contrast right here. 
The other advantage of these knobs is they have this satisfying little pop when you get them right on. If these don't fit at first, I should have a loose version where the hole is just a little bit bigger and you can glue it or whatever. Um, and also you can have a lighter and hold it up to the flame very carefully, of course, and just melt the plastic and then push it on. That's a technique I use a lot to get pieces to like more or less press fit. Engineer. So now we have all these fancy wires coming from it, but they have nowhere to go. That's why I invented this piece. I'm sure people have already invented this, but give me the benefit of the doubt. This piece doesn't actually fit right here because the screws are too short. So you can use spacers. I think these are 10 millimeter spacers, M3, and then just tighten them down. Now you can put this piece here. And I think I even routed a little hole for the wires. You can make it all tidy and neat. Um, this is the prototype version though, so we don't got that fancy stuff. This piece fits right on top of here, but before we do that, we need to put these spacers for that go to the Arduino. That way you can tighten them on the back before you put it on. Not after, like I've <laughs> been doing in the past. Note that you won't use these two, these are if you use the smaller circuit board. So it's all on one piece. Just use this, 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 and this. Now you can put this on, screw it down, and you'll be all set. Finally, you can mount the Arduino. Now we're all finished with the construction. You can mount it into your panel like this and use the DXF cutout I've provided. Should be with the, the other files in the description below. Or you can make it radio mounted like I have for my Cessna 172 project. So you can print these little brackets here, push them right here and here, screw them down. Then this whole assembly slides into the Cessna 172 panel. You have these screws right here where you can tighten it down to the sides. So this is the Cessna 172 project mounting system. So it'll fit into your Cessna 172 if you want. Now we just need to plug everything in. You'll notice on these rotary encoders right here, there are three pins right here and two right here. One of these will go to ground. One of them will go to an input pin we'll assign later as a button. And then the middle one right here is ground. The other two sides go to A and B. Uh, also pins you'll assign in the Arduino later. Your dual encoder should have documentation about it. In this case, uh, there are these two grounds, the ground on the switch, and then A and B, A and B. So it's all the same. The LCD is a different animal, however, and these are the same drivers, so the wiring is identical. There's GND, which goes to ground, VCC, which goes to 5 volts, SDA, which goes to, you, you guessed it, these are straightforward, SDA, and this pin should be labeled right here as pin 20 on the Arduino Mega. SDA goes here, SCL goes there. I have a wiring diagram in the description below somewhere or on screen now that shows you all the wiring. In my case, I'm using pins two through six here. And then after that, I'm skipping seven and going eight through 10. Skipping seven just because I don't, didn't wanna break this into two pieces. Then you plug in the grounds to ground right here or wherever else you want on the Arduino. There are a lot of ground spots. After we do the LCD, we're good to go. Now the hardware is all done. Next time we'll be going through the software in MobiFlight. You can find all of the files to this in the description below. There's a printables and then there's also a link to the GitHub. Now we have this complete multi-radio. Once we do the configuration of it, the link to that will be in the description below. It should come out within a month. But then again, I said that on the OBS video and I think it's been two years. But I really look forward to filming this because there's some really cool software that goes behind getting this to work. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe. And thank you so much to the patrons who help make this possible. All right, it's been a wacky day. So with that, I will see you next time. Have a good one.